Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another episode of Owning Your Sexual Self. Excited to be back with this topic today for the podcast. I see this as definitely being a resource moving forward. Um, I met with clients earlier this week and I got to give them a demonstration of the differences between items that you can use for impact play. So I got to show them a difference between a flogger and a crop and a paddle and just what you can use and how to accurately use these things in a way that can be both painful and pleasurable. But what I find with most people, most now, yes, there are the people out there that want to feel that pain. However, most people have this threshold into which pain equals pleasure. And so often, so this was, this was a couple and just like so many couples that I work with, there's one person in the relationship that's like, Ooh, I don't know about this impact play. It can be really scary. I don't really want to be you know, experiencing pain during sex or during intimacy, what is even the process behind this? Why does this even make sense? And so being able to, again, be in this role as a, as a sex coach, a sex therapist, sex educator, sex mentor, whatever you want to refer to me as, and being able to be doing this for 10 years, these, this is, this is what I get to do. I get to educate people. And now you listening to this episode right now, you get to also receive that education. And so I'm going to, if you're not, if you're just listening to the show, that is totally fine. But if you wanted to pop over to YouTube and watch a portion of this podcast episode, I will be demonstrating a few of the the items that I mentioned. Like I have over here, I have my flogger, I have a feather, I have a blindfold, I have a paddle, I have a crop. I'm like, what else did I already say? So I have some things that I'm going to be showing and highlighting for this episode today. So first and foremost, I want to start just by kind of sharing with you. So there is something to be said about the energy when it comes to BDSM play or Dom sub play and really intimacy in general. The energy in the container and in the space needs to be present in a in a way that safety feels present. Um, and I would say like safety equals sexy. Because if I tell my partner, hey, I, I'm really interested in being flogged, or I'm really interested in experimenting with a paddle and to see what that feels like. And in the middle of sex, he just whips out this paddle and starts patting me on the butt with it. That might not necessarily work for most people. <laughs> and I know definitely that didn't work for me. And it hasn't worked for many clients that I've been working with. The same conversation we talked about when it comes to spanking. I've actually heard from most people, many people rather, that you know, if I'm, if I'm in the middle of sex and all of a sudden I feel the smack on the ass, that is not necessarily what I mean when I say I want to experiment with spanking. Now, again, this is, there's no one way for everybody, but majority I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of people over these last 10 years and doing this. And that is the majority of what I hear from people, um, women in particular, that, you know, that spank in the middle of the se- in sex is, can actually be startling and actually take us out of the moment. Um, if something was feeling good or if we were really enjoying ourselves now, just keep that in mind, right? Spanking can take us out of the moment. Now, when you are introducing intentional spanking or intentional impact play, again, that can take you out of the moment. That can actually help in sort of this reverse ninja psychology way. If I'm if I'm feeling very out of my body, in introducing impact play, again, with intention and with safety created around it can actually help me drop more into my body and be more present with myself, present with sensation in particular, just as this can work for you. So I want to start by saying like, again, this pain, pain is not necessarily the goal. And when you're in- incorporating impact play with your partner, you want to be having this conversation. You want to be able to ask them, hey, if in, I like to use this number scale. So on a scale of one to 10, if one is I barely felt it or I didn't feel it at all rather. And 10 is, oh my gosh, no, stop immediately way too much. Like 10 is your, is your hard. No, you're red, your safe word, if you will. You want to ask your partner, where do you want? What is ideal for you right now in this moment in terms of the threshold that you want to experience this? We'll just call it sensation because I don't want to call it pain. I don't want to call it pleasure because again, it's like, it can be a mixture of both of those things. So what I hear, when I see when I do this demonstration with clients, most often the people are wanting to be right in that like four, five, six range, like somewhere in the middle of the road. Now there have been times personally for me where it's like, no, I want to, if I've been having an extra hard day, or if, if let's say if I'm in ovulation, my, I can feel 
sensation, I can take more sensation than let's say if I was in luteal phase where my body is just a little bit more tender during that time. So again, this is a conversation that you want to have with your partner going into this to be able to know where they're at. And when you start to inflict those first couple either smacks, again, if you're doing this with spanking, if you're doing this with any sort of impact items, doing those first couple first couple hits, you want to ask what number was that? Where was that for you? Questions like that, like very direct questions into where you can get that, that numbered answer from your partner. That was a five. That was a five, but I actually think I want to change my mind. I think I want to be more in like seven, eight range, right? So then you're able to know because every partner's five is going to look different. And again, that five might be different today versus what that five threshold is going to be for them a week from now, a month from now. So always having that checking in. And then I always recommend, so when I walk people through this, I have them get into the space of the energy. I have them get into if the person that is going to be inflicting inflicting the wax, I have them get into the state of masculinity, no matter what their gender is. I have them get into the state of confidence, build up the state of confidence, build up this sense of presence, build up the sense of I'm caring for somebody, right? Because that's what this, this is. This is the dominant is, it's, is consenting to take the submissive on a journey in which they are consenting to go on. That's what this is. And so this space can just be so caring and so beautiful and so creative and tender and all these wonderful things. It doesn't have to be seen as something scary. So in having that, again, having that energy and then on the vice versa, so the person that is receiving, allowing them to drop into more of their feminine and and soften and be in a receiving state of mind and, and having trust Uh, you know, turned on trusting that their partner is going to care and watch out for them and do, you know, do what they're what they're asking of them. Now, again, this is like just very basic, I would say when it comes to impact play, there are people that are deeper within the BDSM dom sub community, and they have, you know, years and years or many times of experience with this. So this podcast really is directed to those that are just wanting to start off, like just wanting to dip your toe in this space. This is this is for you. This is like that intro episode. So again, remember, safety equals sexy. Cannot say that enough. Safety equals sexy. Safety means that that person that is receiving, they're more willing to go there, if you will. They're more likely to drop into that flow state of sex that you have heard me mention before on this podcast. Okay, so we talked through communication. Um, Again, communication is so, 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 so important. You want to make sure that you have that safe word when you start out, you know, and communication can be also including noises, sounds, things that you know that when you are inflicting these things, it's feeling good to your partner. So person that is receiving, this is a tip to you to know and feel confident in your voice and your moan that you can communicate to your partner and letting them know what's good just based on the way, just on those nonverbals or that mm-hmm or mm, ah, yeah, <laughs> like you're watching fireworks, <laughs> if you will. So So communication, and then you also want to warm up. So that's where I'm actually kind of warming up would hit into the, what I was just speaking to in terms of creating that energy space, creating that confidence within yourself, dropping more into the dominant role, dropping more into the submissive role, but really, really taking this slowly. This again, if, if I tell my partner, I'm interested in flogging, they just grab the flogger and they start flogging me. That's not what I mean. Like that's, I want there to be some buildup to it. I want there to be some teasing, you know, leading me into it very softly. And so if you haven't listened to the the spanking podcast, I'm I'm not going to go too much into spanking here because I have a whole podcast about that. But if you want to revert back to that episode, I talk a lot about the warm up phase for something like this. So if you're inflicting, if you're practicing impact play with somebody, you definitely want to warm up the body. If you are someone, probably a female listening to this podcast, and you've ever just been walking nonchalantly and somebody that you unexpectedly comes up and smacks your ass, whether it's a partner or not, we, most of us have experienced something like that. Again, it could probably, if they got that good contact, you know, you felt that sting and that there's, there was no blood flow to that area. Those nerve endings were, were not ready for that. And so that probably was more painful for you versus had you again, been in that mindset, blood flow was going, there was some sort of warm up happening before that impact was inflicted. 
So again, just as I talked about in the spanking podcast, really giving like a nice body massage over to the areas that you're going to be uh, inflicting on. So mainly butt is going to be a big, big area here. So nice little butt massage. I don't know anybody that doesn't like a butt massage. So nice little butt massage, nice little smoothing of the butt. Maybe you're just doing a little couple little light pats here, like a little pitter patter, just kind of like playing your bongos, playing your drum. Again, you're just, this is not to be painful. This is just to be nice and inviting and you're warming up that area. Now for somebody that is more into the, let's say my central blueprints, you may may have heard my podcast on erotic blueprints. The other two things I'm going to mention here that aren't necessarily impact play items, but you might want to incorporate a blindfold. Incorporating that blindfold can actually help somebody drop more into their body. Um, And then you also add that extra layer of anticipation and excitement because they don't know, uh, you know, what what's coming next. And blindfold, I would say when you take away that sense of sight, it heightens all of your other senses. So this is really a win win in terms of sensation and then can also be a win win in terms of safety. I know many people that prefer to wear a blindfold because it, again, just helps them get out of their head. They're not watching what their partner is doing. They're not judging what their face looks like. And sometimes for my people that are more in the dominant role that are are giving the wax. I'm just going to go with wax, <laughs> giving the wax. Um, they prefer that their partner wears that blindfold because maybe they aren't fully in their confidence yet. They don't want, they, they worry to be seen. They worry to, you know, if they're fumbling or something like that, if they're trying to decide what to use next, anything like that, knowing that their partner can't see what they're doing can actually help them feel more confident in the long run. So blindfolds, blindfolds are actually one of my favorite, favorite sex toys, just such an easy, easy thing to incorporate and can have so many benefits for us. The other thing I want to talk about is a feather. Oh, yes. If you type in, I think it's on Amazon. Well, yes, it's on Amazon, but I think this is technically an ostrich feather. Um, But just type in sex feather on Amazon. These come in a five pack. They're black, as you see here, and they are just nice and light and airy. And again, this can be something we're talking about prepping the space, prepping the body, helping them drop more into their body. So if your partner is blindfolded before you go into that warm up of the butt, maybe you trace their body all along with this feather. And just, again, you're getting them used to the sensation um, of, of touch and, and you're experimenting with different sensations of touch. So blindfold and feather, two of my favorites can be really, really fun uh, to be able to play with. And again, for somebody that is on that sensual blueprint, they like all of the textures. They want all of the things, all of the senses to be fired off. Um, And so wanted to mention those. Okay. And then if you don't have any of these impact play items already, if you don't already have a crop or a flogger um, or a paddle or anything like that, that is totally, totally fine. You can also use what you have, right? Your hands. I just talked about thinking, using your hands, you have fingernails. So scratching on the body, rubbing on the body, lightly tickling on the body, light massage, deep massage, right? Smacking, spanking. You can do so much with your hands and your fingers, right? Where they're very tech, um, dec- what is the word? Dexterous? What is the, you guys know the word yet. Don't, don't quote me on that. De- oh my gosh. Yeah. We're not going to get hung up there, <laughs> but you can do so much with your hands and with your uh, fingers. And again, if you, a, a fun game that I have clients do is to uh, each of them set a timer for five minutes and go around your house and find things that are not sex toys, but can be used as sex toys. And you'll see things can get really creative. Bonus, like ninja tip here, (laughs) your kitchen is filled with sex toys that you probably wouldn't consider. But if you really, really, really turn on your creative hat and you really give some thought to this, things like spatulas, forks, tongs, ice cubes, right? These things are, are, could definitely be used as sex toys. So that could be a fun little game for you that you may want to take away from this podcast. And again, can help to add some creativity into the bedroom. But of course, if you want all of these things, because I know many people after they, after I do this demonstration for them, or if I'm doing a a party and I'm um, promoting these products, people are like, I got to have that. So don't worry, we'll include a link in the show notes here for you to be able to grab these from my storefront and uh, we'll be able to ship them directly to you, no problem. And I'll make sure to include a discount code in there for you as well. Uh, Because some of the things that I'll be showing you are actually from uh, the storefront that I have. So, all right. So let's let's jump into this we talked about the warm up we talked about the communication we talked about having a safe word and 
we talk about creating that energy space. And again, remember safety is sexy. So I get a lot of questions like what, where do I even start when it comes to impact play? What, what is the difference between a, a whip and a flogger and a cane and a crop and all these different things. And so again, remembering that this just educating yourself. And by listening to this podcast, you are educating yourself, but these things do not have to be fear-based. These things can be looked at through more of that lens of pleasure. And so for many people, I'm going to go over each, but for many people, they like to start off with this thing that I'm going to show you here in a minute called the flogger. Sometimes people call them whips. The floggers are, so they range in terms of texture. So the one that I have here is more, it's it's a pretty good texture. It's, it's nice. And uh, it's like a felt texture with leather on the other side. And you see like the tentacle here, if you will, is a little bit thicker. So with the flogger, the thinner that the, the uh, tentacle here is, the more like stingy it's going to be. So if you have something that has really, really thick, ten, I'm just calling them tentacles. If you have a flogger that has really more thick tentacles, then it is going to be less painful on that impact. Um, and so these can be thick. They can be heavy, generally suede. Um leather, right? So these are, these tend to spread over larger areas of the body. So they, they deliver a lot of stimulation with one single swing. Now with a flogger, again, going back to that warm up process, I'm not going to just whip this out and start hitting my person as hard as I can, right? There is an art to this. So maybe I start when I'm like, when I'm blindfolding them and I'm doing the feather, maybe I just have the, the flogger just lying on their body. And right, and they're starting to feel that energy. They're starting, that you're starting to build up that anticipation of what is to come next. And you're getting their body and their nervous system familiar with the item of impact that you're going to be using. Then maybe I start, and again, this does not have to be pain. Maybe I just start dragging the flogger on the body, just like I did with that feather all over the body, genitals, non-genitals, really just getting them used to that sensation. And this again, the flogger can be, it can be, I would say it's the most tameous and least painful of, of the items that I'm going to show you. I, I say that with like a gray area, which I'll talk about when I get to the paddle. Um, but the flogger is really great for, you know, targeting that upper back area, the butt, the thighs, you want to make sure that you're avoiding, you know, vulva area, testicle area, because that can be really painful. Now, this logger here that I have is actually from my product store, and I love this one because the handle here, as you see, it's got these nice little textured divots to it, um, and it does also vibrate. So if I turn it on, let's see if I turn it on. I don't even know if you'll be able to hear it, but it's got some good vibration to it. And I believe you have 10 different speeds on this. So why that is nice, because now when this is on, my little tentacle guys here are vibrating too, just very lightly. So that just adds a new level of sensation to you, especially for more of that teasing sensation, sensational play. Um, and then of course the vibrator, again, teasing, using that vibrator all over the body when it is vibrating, you could insert it vaginally if you wanted to, you could tease the clitoral area with this. So again, this, this, Flogger specifically is really, really, really good for the warm up phase. Um, and so, again, the flogger, when you, I'm going to show you a few different techniques here to be able to use it. And you want to practice with this, like being able to practice if you're the partner that is getting the flicks, this is going to help to increase your confidence. Maybe even watching a few YouTube videos on this because confidence really matters. If your confidence is off in you and you're trying to use toys like this, your partner is really going to be able to feel that. Again, this energy is so important in this case. And so if your confidence is off, right, your partner feels that that does not equal safety for them. Um, and again, safety is safety. safety is what we want to create here. So with the flogger, right? So if you, you can do this first, like this wind up here. So kind of winding up just as you would a dish towel and then releasing it like that. Again, this doesn't have to, you're going to, you're going to figure out what your distance is to your partner. So this doesn't have to be something that again, is inflicting a lot of pain. Now I can really, you know, get it and get it going. Right. Uh, so again, practice with this. And again, having that check in with your partner on what what their level is on that scale one to 10. 
Now, being able to do it like this, you want to do, it's all, all on the flick of the wrist, y'all, all on the flick of the wrist. And I am no flogging expert, though I have played a time or two. So you see I'm doing like this figure eight motion. So I would be doing this either over their back, over their butt. And this kind of creates that wind sound, but it's just lightly hitting, lightly hitting their body. I can go a little bit harder if I'm wanting to, you know, inflict more pain with it. Um, or more sensation rather. Again, it doesn't have to be painful. It's, it might not be painful to some people. Um, and again, the texture of your tentacles is going to make a difference based on what the sensation is that that person is feeling. So those are just a few techniques for you for the flogger. Um, and again, I would say that the flogger, most people that I work with, they like to start with the flogger. I This is what I recommend people to start with because you can do so much with it. It is very versatile. So you get a lot of different um, variety with your impact play when you're using something like a flogger. Okay, so, and if you had two, you could do that figure eight <laughs> with two floggers, right? You got two hands for a reason. Uh, so again, you can get super creative with these. So that uh, that is your first one. That would be your flogger. Again, good place to start with. I would say that that is gonna be like a light to medium on the pain, on the pain threshold. And again, you're covering a lot of surface with this. Now, the next category I'm gonna go through is gonna be your paddles slash slappers. All right. So I would say this would be a paddle. My heart shaped one is a paddle because it has a larger surface and I would call this one more of a slapper. Yes. It says Mrs. Maine on it. Um, this one more of a slapper because it is a little bit, uh, thinner, right? But basically you have your paddle and your slapper, and this is really good. This is really good if you are wanting to focus just on one area of the body. So these are really good to hit with, hit the butt with. Um, paddles generally aren't too flexible. Like you see, like this has got, this has got um, some sturdiness to it. Most of them are made of leather. Some might be made of wood. Some might even be made of metal, um, but they're usually pretty slim and about one foot of length. So a simple spanking motion with this one. Simple spanking, you want to, you know, again, flick of the wrist, really get that good impact going. Um, but I would say in terms of when I said that gray area between um, flogger being the least intense versus a uh, paddle, paddles, be, depending on their thickness, paddles actually absorb the blow a lot. So paddles, you can really like I can do my full force with a paddle and it probably would still only register as like a six or a seven for my partner at my hardest whack. <laughs> so again, when you get these tools, you want to be able to play around with them and see where these things fall for your partner and kind of do that each time again, because your body changes, your, your nervous system changes, all of that. Now slappers are more piece. They're, or, I'm sorry, short. They're more of like that single piece design. Um, they do have a, they do have a handle. They're a little bit more flexible. Um, but because it's skinnier, right, you're able to really, really target that area that you want to. And um, the slappers rather are usually a little bit lighter. Uh, so if you have experience, if you have any experience with a slapper, you can usually, you can see that these are generally much easier to use paddles and slappers um, because again, it's pretty, it's pretty basic, right? You, you know, you know how to use a slapper. you you have done that probably ever since you were a kid to be able to smack something. <laughs> so um I would say, yeah. So paddles, paddles are personally one of my favorite. I, I, I like paddles and floggers the best, honestly, because again, you, it's just like, I like to start with a paddle. Those, as I said earlier, like the little bongos, it helps to, for me personally, just to be able to drop into the space of like, okay, we're, we're now stepping into the space of impact play. So I like to start with the paddle, then move to the flogger, and then whatever happens, happens after that. <laughs> so that, okay, so those two floggers and paddles, I would say would be good for your, <clears throat> good for your beginners. Intermediate tools, I'm going to say more, is going to be more of the crop. So crops consist of maybe like a, this, this longer plastic handle. They are easier to make um, contact with the skin. Well, I say easier lightly, this little tail part here can be a little bit hard actually to work with. So this is generally made of leather or silicone. Generally it's rectangle shape or some sort of like triangle shapes like this. And it has more of that slapping feel to it. 
Now, crops are relatively easy and quick to master since they're so easy to control and you can know you know what your um, what pain level you are inflicting with these. Um, and I would say again, like crops definitely step it up a level from the paddle. So if you have somebody that is wanting to stay more into that three, four, five area, you probably aren't going to want to use a crop. You're probably going to want to stick to paddle and um, flogger. But if you want somebody that is going to want more of that, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, even a crop could a crop could uh, get you to there. And then the crop, because it is a little bit smaller, it's a little bit, you know where you're hitting, right? There's like less human error with this in your targeting. And so the crop is something that really you could use all over the body. And so some people, again, like that. So cropping and hitting on the arms, again, you're just getting blood flow to those areas. And, and you see now here, I'm doing this very lightly, but you're just increasing that blood flow, increasing that sensation. Um, and then this is nice on the butt, legs, lower back all those areas too. <laughs> all right. So we have, we also offer a crop in our, in my clickable store too, which again, I'll link, I'll link all the bondage items for you there that we have. Um, now whips, uh, let's say whips and canes, I would say those are going to be more your expert level. I won't go too much into those because as I promised, um, I wanted to make this just like a very basic beginners. Where do I even start when it comes to impact play? And, um, yeah, so we'll save crop, I'm sorry, we'll save canes and uh, whips. <laughs> sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. Canes and whips late, uh, for a later episode. Okay, and yeah, final word of warning here before we wrap this up. Again, really focusing on your space, warming up that space, working on your stance, practicing with the tools, checking in with your partner, adding in a little bit of that bondage, such as blindfolds, or even if you wanted to step this up and adding some restraints to take away movement for your partner that can just really intensify the experience for them. But again, communication, energy, confidence, safety is of the utmost importance here. Um, and yeah, last word of warning, when you are inflicting, you really want to make sure that you are avoiding that person's uh, like kidney areas on their back. You want to make sure you are really, really focusing on, I would say, butt and even lower thighs. So you don't, you don't want to, yeah, just avoid avoiding that kidney area. You don't want to do more damage than you do good. And really, again, if you're just starting out, I would say just focus on the butt, focus on that good, fleshy, squishy, where all the jiggle is. That's where you want to focus. We got a lot of nerve endings there, but we have a lot of fat there to kind of help us um, absorb the blow, if you will. So without further ado, y'all, I hope this was helpful. Again, if you're somebody that is wanting to dabble into impact play, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Of course, you can always ask me any questions um, on, on this topic. And I look forward to hearing your feedback on this. Let's see if you're watching this on, on YouTube, you got a little, you got a little demonstration here. If you are local to me, you know that I do these in-home parties where I come to your home, um, with your, if you just wanted to do a girl's night or a couple's night or anything like that, I come to your home. I demonstrate these products for you, open up a private shopping room for you to be able to purchase these things. So if you're local to me here in the Michigan area, let me know. I'd love to come out. I'd love to meet you in person. And uh, yeah. All right. Have fun with your flogging, your cropping, your whipping. Oh my. <laughs> this can be really fun. It can be a new way to connect with your partner in a deeper, deeper, more sensational way. All right, y'all. Until next time. Have a good one.